Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome, my friends, to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel. This is Pastor Rafael Perez, and I'm inviting you to have a word of prayer with us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your mercies, and we ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit, that as we study your word, you will rightly help us divide the word of truth. Now, Lord, thank you for your presence, and may we be guided by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. 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 Let's uh, move along on Revelation 9. We have been talking about, in previous program, about the, the, the trumpets. And uh, we have found out that the trumpets are wars, right? And, and conflicts. And um, I know we explained how the, uh, the, the, the pagan Rome was there in the trumpets, and we want to move along to the fifth trumpets, right? And you were discussing uh, on verse 1, chapter 5, I, I know you want to bring something about the key. What is interesting, what, is, what will be of interest to all of us as a student of the Bible about the key, which is found, the word key, chapter 9, verse 1, because it says that to that star that was falling from heaven, the key of the bottomless pit has been given. What does that mean? Notice that, well, we saw that a star represents a religious leader. Mm -hmm. The fall from heaven means he's a fallen star or an uh, fallen from truth, fallen mm -hmm. from heaven. And um, the key represents a symbol of authority and power. If you have a lot of keys, you're, you have the authority to enter into Many uh, places. Many places. And in the Christian, in Christianity, the keys that were given to uh, God's people is, is the, the, the Word, Word of God, God only. Well, and, but you're not talking about, uh, because many people believe that, the, 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 that Jesus gave some special key to Peter. Uh, when, when yeah. We don't believe that. Yeah, uh, no two keys, one to the civil power and one to the um, uh, spiritual. But... We have the word of God as our authority. Yeah, Matthew 21, isn't it? Jesus talked about even the Pharisees, you know, they, they were holding on for people to come in, uh, you know, enter into the kingdom. So they had the key. The Pharisees had the key, meaning the word of God in those days, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What else uh, can we... So this would be a false key, which would represent a false word You're of God. You're talking about Revelation 9, yeah. verse 1 now. In Revelation 9, verse 1, this would be the key to the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. No foundation. No um, word of God. Yeah. And so it would be a false word of God, mm -hmm. and that would be in this uh, Muslim religion, the Quran. And the Quran mentions the key being given to Muhammad. Mm. And but it was a false key. Yes. And, and I hope that this will not you know, um, make anybody upset because no doubt that in that religion, like, a, like in every one of the religions, there are good people in there. We're talking about, again, the, the, the system, a set of uh, religious we're, belief. Or, we're, yeah, we're talking about systems that exist, but also we're talking about Bible prophecy mm -hmm. and how God foretold the rise of these religions, in this case, Mohammedism, Islam and his fall. Mm -hmm. And one thing, can be, one thing we can be certain about, the key was also a symbol of power and authority mm -hmm. that was given him. And you find it when the rise of Muhammad took place, surely he had power and authority as time went on over the desert tribes of Arabia mm -hmm. and the different places uh, that were, that where, he, where, where he began to grow. But in Revelation chapter 9, going back, it also says that he opened the bottom of his pit and there rolled smoke out the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. First of all, let's notice something very carefully. And then it says here, out of the pit, it says, a smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Mm 
-hmm. Let's look at this for a moment. What does the issue of a furnace, let's talk about a furnace for a moment. Why does the Bible mention a furnace? In Deuteronomy chapter four, verse 20, the Bible says, but the Lord has taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day. Notice very carefully, a furnace was a symbol here, we're gonna find out, of affliction. Uh, God brought Israel out of the affliction or slavery from Egypt. Let's go again in Exodus chapter 20, verse one. Notice what God says. He says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out the land of Egypt and out the house of what? Bondage. I want you to notice that this furnace is also a symbol, and we're gonna find a symbol of bondage and also a symbol of slavery. Because the furnace, when, when Israel was in Egypt, they were in what? In bondage. bondage, okay? Slavery. And we're gonna find in Isaiah 48, verse 10, look what the Bible says there in Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10. But it says, but it says behold, I will have refined thee with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of what? Affliction. Affliction. A furnace was a symbol of bondage. A furnace was a symbol of affliction. This furnace represented the, the, the way Muhammad and them would begin to conquer. They would take in people, they would enslave people, they would put them into bondage. He would even bring affliction upon the people. As a result of turning them, either, you would either turn to become Islamic, in this case a Muslim, or you would be afflicted. killed or afflicted. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it meant. And so we're gonna find here that a furnace was a symbol of affliction, pain, suffering, and persecution, which the Mohammedans brought upon the people and upon the land. Terror. Like terror. You know they, they, were the, they were originators of terror. And I wanted to, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, but I want to bring out this one so, more point. So this is a church state system. This is a church state system. This is the new military religion. New militant religion that was rising upon the scene, a church and state entity, but, but a very deep religious entity mm -hmm. that did not allow for any rivals. And now, so it's very important, and then look at verse uh, three, verse, uh, it says here, uh, verse two, it said, the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke. Now, what does it mean for the sun and the air to be darkened? Let's take a look at that for a moment. What does darkness represent? So in, in Revelation 9, 2, it said the air was darkened. But now I want, to notice, I want you to notice something with me. Go with me to Psalms 82, 5. Can you read that for me, Patrick? Psalms 82, 5. I want you to tell what darkness represents. First of all, darkness is a symbol of something. And we want you to see for a moment. We're going to find out. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. So darkness is a symbol, as you, those of you watching us here, you know, darkness is a what? Symbol of ignorance or not knowing or not having understanding. And so there was something that the people in the Eastern countries were now uh, being darkened. Uh, they were not, there was something that was gonna block their understanding of what? Affliction, this affliction and slavery was gonna block their understanding of what? It said of the sun and the moon. I mean the sun and the air. What is the sun a symbol of? Hmm? Well, if we look Malachi at the, 4 verse 2. Let's go to Malachi, Malachi 4 2. The Bible says, But unto you that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. So we find here that this sun represents the sun of righteousness. Amen. Arise with what? Healing in his wings. So who is the son of righteousness? Who is our righteousness? Jesus Christ. Look at Philippians 3, 9. <laughs> Philippians yes. chapter 3, verse 9. Let's see who is our righteousness. I know in 1 Corinthians 1, 30, it says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Christ is our righteousness. But what does it say in Philippians 3, 9? 3, 9. Mm -hmm. It says, And be found in him, talking about Jesus, mm -hmm. not having mine own mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. The righteousness which is of God by what? By faith. <clears throat> by faith. So we're going to find here that the sun was darkened. The people would be forbidden to accept Christ and receive of his what? Righteousness. And any one of the people that will oppose to that that will, will not follow 
their belief they will, they will they will they will be afflicting the people they will they would afflict the people <laughs> the people and, that will follow Christ right and so now let's see something so the Bible called this it said there was darkness right but what else does darkness represent we know darkness represents ignorance but let's see go to Acts chapter twenty six verse seventeen and eighteen Acts twenty six seventeen and eighteen the Bible says delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open the eyes and turn them from what? Darkness, Darkness to light, from the power oh, of Satan, Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Notice very carefully here that darkness also represents the power of Satan, mm. demonstrating that this power that's rising up out of the bottomless pit, that will bring affliction, that will bring bondage. The Bible shows this power that will bring darkness is the, the, the spirituality behind it is the devil and his angels. But at the same time, this power will bring affliction. It is the power of Satan and not the Holy Ghost. Well, one thing, um, if I could also add to that, Mm -hmm. in, in Revelation 9, it talks about the smoke rising up that would darken the air. And smoke, back in, in the previous chapter in Revelation, Revelation 8, verse 3, it says that... 8, 3, right? Revelation? Yes. Mm -hmm. It Good. says, um, Another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came up with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And so this smoke here would not be a true smoke or a true prayers, smoke representing the prayers of the saints. This would be. You're talking about over here. When you say here in chapter oh. 9 of Revelation. Right, right. Uh, in Revelation 8, the smoke represents the true prayers of the saints. But in chapter 9, this would be a false smoke. A counterfeit smoke. And what in the Muslim religion is noted for their many prayers, five times a day, toward, toward the bottomless pit, Mecca, where the meteorite is in the Kaaba. And you have to pray facing there five times a day, and then once in your life, make a pilgrimage. Okay, so um, in, uh, since we we're moving along, how about darkness? Uh, since the Word of God in Psalms 119, 105, 105 says mm -hmm. it's the light. So could that say, mean that the darkness is something opposite that is opposed to the Word of God too? That too, but we're going to find that as we continue to look at this, that the darkness is, the adopter, this darkness obscures the light. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, uh, why don't we do this? We are going to uh, continue with this topic, but watch this first. We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the Church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. So, Pastor Barry, mm -hmm. we talking about the furnace, the sun, and how about the air? The air. Go to me, First John. 3, go to me to John three eight. First of all, air. Another word for air is wind. And so we're going to find that the air is a symbol of wind. But what do you know about wind? What do you remember about wind in the Bible? Go with me to John three eight. The Bible says, "The wind bloweth where it listeneth." Jesus is talking here to Nicodemus about being born again and talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. He says, the wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound, but cannot tell from whence it cometh. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. 
So the Bible shows here that the wind is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. But let's go a little bit closer. John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. It says, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, it says here, Even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and they and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So wind, or air, is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so the darkness that came over the Arabian Peninsula at the rise of Mohammedanism is the darkness that will obscure the gospel of Jesus Christ to the point that the people through Mohammed's false religion, they would not receive the righteousness of God. They would be ignorant of the work and power of conversion of the Holy Spirit which is so bleeded for man to be recovered and restored into the image of God. Mm. This is what was darkened. This is what, now let me ask you a question. Did God give us the symbol of Islam in the actual prophecy? Remember, we're not giving our opinion. This is what the Bible says when we break down the symbols in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to ask again, did God give a symbol? If you have the sun and the air darkened, what other heavenly bodies are left in the sky? You'd have the moon, the moon and a star and the star. The stars. What is the emblem of Islam? Crescent the, moon and a star. A moon crescent and a moon and a star. God gave us the actual emblems of this power. Is no other power in Revelation chapter nine that can be identified but the rise of Islam. And still in the children of the East. Let's see. Let's take a little closer and look at this for a moment to be sure. Who are the locusts talking about? The Bible says locusts came out of the pit. What are locusts? Locusts came up out of the pit. Another word for locusts is grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true? Yeah. Go meet a Nah Nahum uh, 3.15. Patrick, can you read that for me? Nahum chapter 3, verse 15. And Pastor Perez, could you read for me uh, Nahum um, Judges? Could you read Judges 7.12 for me? I want Judges. you to see here. Nahum 3.15. There shall and come... There shall the fire devour thee, the sword shall cut thee off, it shall cut thee up like the canker worm, make thyself many as the canker worm, make thyself many as the locust. As a locust. Here we see the word locust. Go to verse 16 and 17. Thou hast multiplied thy merchants above the stars of heaven, the canker worm spoileth and flieth away, thy crowned are as the locusts, and thy captains as the great grasshoppers which camp in the hedges in the cold day, but when the sun ariseth, they flee away, and their place is not known where they are. In verse 17, what did God call the locusts here? He called them grasshoppers. Right. Mm -hmm. We find that the scriptures are calling locusts grasshoppers. Another word for locusts, we know now is grasshopper, but go on now, let's go again to jo Joshua. Judges chapter 7, verse 12. Okay, it says judge, Joshua or Judges? Okay. Judges. Judges, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Judges 7, 12. Right? Judges 7, 12, yes. Okay. Let's take a look at that together. Let's read it over here. Um, it says, And the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east lay alone in the valley like grasshoppers, grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number, as the sand of the sea, side for multitude. So we see that the Midianites and the Amalekites, which were children of the what? East, of the East, were like grasshoppers, the Bible says. And notice very carefully, the Bible goes on and says here that they were or grasshoppers or what, they were, what was another one for grasshoppers? Locusts. Mm -hmm. So the locusts, they came off the bottomless pit, the bottomless pit representing the deserts of Arabia. The Arabian Peninsula, where Ishmael was actually sent after Abraham sent Hagar and Ishmael away. We're going to find that it was through the promise that God made to Ishmael that he would have 12, 12 princes would come out of his loins. We're going to find that these 12 princes make up the, Ara the Arabic nations that we see today. And, one, and the major religion of the Arabic nations became Islam. And so we're going to find that God here in the word of God has foretold the rise of Islam, but also the Bible foretells their fall. Let, let me ask you a quick question so we can understand how the enemy 
of the gospel of the word of God works, which is Satan, right? Mm -hmm. um, when Jesus was crucified, he was crucified in the middle of two what? Two thieves. Two thieves. Mm -hmm. Is this a coincidence, I ask you, and I want our friends out there to, to take notice of this, that right around the same time when this religious and political power was raising up, darken the truth of the gospel, trying to bring darkness into this world, persecuting, you know, afflicting the people, okay? Mm -hmm. There was another power too at that time that was raising up, that was also dark in the gospel, mixing the truth, the beautiful truth of the gospel with tradition and pagan belief. Uh, belief. Yes. Is, is, is there something for us to, I mean, to see in the word of God? Do you see it, Brother Pachi? Well, you're talking about the Holy Roman Emperor, Empire, another union of church and state right. that was very intolerant of any uh, afflicting too, afflicted yeah. because I mean the history is full of all the persecution and and the afflictions that the uh, papacy brought, you know, to to those who oppose mm -hmm. to their belief. So how history repeats. Hmm? The truth of the gospel was in the middle, and Satan raised one power over here on this side, one on the other side. <laughs> took two power to go out to bring darkness into this world. Yes, but he brought two powers opposing the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what I'm saying. The papacy opposing the gospel. And wow. in fact, we're going to find out there were three powers because actually you had the papacy <laughs> opposing the gospel. Then you had Mohammedanism opposing the gospel. The true gospel. And then near the end of just prior to the papal wounding of 1798, when the papacy was being taken down, you had atheism through right. the French Revolution opposing the gospel, which became known as communism or socialism today. Right, but, but, but you see, that took place, uh, that came way after these two. These first two. The, the, yes. the first two. These yes. first two came up almost simultaneously. Mm -hmm. One around the fourth century, the other one in the sixth century. Yes, one come, yes. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable how uh, so many things that God on his love, so much evidence that God on his love has been leaving, given to us through the true holy book, the Bible. Yes, yes. Patrick. Um, I would like to read the end of verse 2, chapter 9, verse 2. It chapter says, nine. Revelation. Yeah, that the, um, the smoke of the great furnace was coming up, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And the pit we saw was the earth in a desolate condition, the Arabian desert. And this religion came, the Muslim religion, came out of the Arabian desert, out of this pit. And there came out, verse 3, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And this was the, was the armies of the Muslim religion coming out of the pit, out of the smoke, out of the religion. And so it shows that it was a union of church and state, the Muslim religion rising up, uh, intolerant of the air and, and the <laughs> As smoke. the papacy was a, a, a union of mm -hmm. church and state. I like to also, wow. I like to point out what Patrick said is true because this word power is very interesting. Go with me to Revelation uh, 16, verse seven. The Bible said, when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice from the four beasts said, come and see. And I looked and behold, a pale horse and his name that sat upon him was death and hell followed him. And what power was given unto him? Now notice again, power. But what did this, what was, the, what was this power connected to? Power to what? Over, over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death. Power is not only political power, but the power also is the power to kill with the sword, with hunger, and with death. Uh, this is what we see taking place here in and, the rise of Mohammedanism. And that shows that this power has to be a union of church and state because it's using civil power, the power of the state. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely, yes. And so we find that that's... By that, the way, mm -hmm. Jesus said, my kingdom is what? 
Not of this world. Not of this world. And so Christianity is totally different. It's like salt yes. mingling among all the nations in a, in a blessed way. True Christianity. Not trying to force anyone. That's right. But by the power of persuasion. Okay, true Christianity will respect the free will. Yes. But yes. those two power, the, 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 these two systems, historically speaking, always has been trying to impose their belief and anyone that will that be, that being opposing to that, they'll bring affliction, they'll bring death, they'll bring war. Yes. Unbelievable. And yes. you you using the using the secular power. Now let, let's go along. I know our time is, is running quickly over here, but I just want to before we close over here, there is another another thing that I want to bring over verse there. And, uh, yeah, in verse four. Mm -hmm. At least if we can introduce this verse four, because there is something that has to do not only for that time, historically speaking, but for this end time too. Oh, one, one other point I'd like to bring yeah, go about ahead. the locusts uh -huh. is that if you, if you see the geographical extent of the locust species, mm -hmm. it com it's almost exactly as the area that um, Islam. Islam conquered in That's the right. first 150 years. Wow. That's right. How, so prophecy fulfilled to the better letter. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So verse 4, can you, you want to read it, Pastor? Right, verse 4 says, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, mm -hmm. neither any tree, but only those men who have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Okay. There, there are so many good points that I, will, I would like to us to bring over here because uh, an important one for all of us to understand, in order for us to know the time that we are living. Um, uh, and, uh, again, we have to conclude it, mm -hmm. but why don't we do this? In the next program, we I, would like, I want you, the both of you, uh, to bring over here, because that was a command given to this Islamic power, mm -hmm. not to hurt the grass or the green thing, uh, but those, only those who have not the seal of God. We're, we're, we're going to ponder in into their the, explain it, in their forehead. Uh, in the meantime, we need to close. I just need to remind you, God loves you all, and God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.